Welcome to Paper and Moose. Since many of you enjoyed my vintage clothing haul from the yard sale, I thought that I would make a little video of some of the vintage clothing that I have purchased throughout the years and how I've used it in vintage photo shoots. Um, for the photo shoots that I do, they're pretty much just for fun. They're for me when I'm 70 or 80 years old, I can look back and see you know, what I was doing when I was in my 20s and in my 30s. All the clothing that I am wearing in these photos, actually, I bought from the same seller um, at the flea market. And then the props that are in the photos are also items that I picked up at the flea market auction, estate sales, etc. Um, three of the photo shoots were in South Jersey, and one was at a cemetery in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yes, that's right, a cemetery. Um, I wanted to do a vintage Halloweenish kind of photo shoot. Um, tasteful though, you know, since it's in a cemetery, you want to be respectful of everyone. And I think I think that I, I did that. So I hope you like these photos. I'll give a little, little narrative in the back so I can share with you my ideas of the photo and the different props that I use. So let's check out some of the vintage photo shoots that I've done over the um, last couple, maybe the last 10 years. Let's see. For the first photo, I always like to incorporate some things in myself into the photos and just have little trinkets and treasures that I found along the way. And this photo highlights that. So you have my name from letters and then the mushroom and the little gnome, which made their appearance in one of my previous photos. The don't park here sign and the little car. I always have the don't park here sign out when I display my, my tin litho or my die cast cars. And I always have car, uh, cars parked around it because I think it's funny. <laughs> the dress form on the right, I believe I picked that up at a yard sale for 10 cents. I love the chippiness of the black paint. Again, one of my favorite pieces. And then on the left, you have a bird. I have a few of these birds. They're made out of like a celluloid plastic kind of material. And then another mushroom in the back. So these photos were taken down in South Jersey, somewhere in Smithville, and another, the others, I forget the name of the little um, historic park that they were taken at, but this dress I purchased at the flea market for $5. It was one of my first vintage dresses that I found, and it's probably one of my favorites. I absolutely love the green color, and it fit perfectly. I didn't have to have it altered or anything. These suitcases were my aunt's. The one actually has a an old Mickey Mouse sticker on the back of it, so we always had to make sure that it was turned away from the camera and not included in the photo. But the homes, the historic buildings down here, oh, what's that a cranberry bog? I forget the name of it, but the historic homes in this area, the, the colors, the wood, it's all great for taking, you know, vintage themed photos. This photo is highlighting the suitcases. You know, suitcases have so many uses. You can store things in them, you can use them for decor, display things on them, and they are more than readily available at your flea markets. So if, you, if you're looking to do something different in your decor and have something that has many uses, I would definitely suggest suitcases. And a lot of them come in great colors. For this photo, it kind of reminded me of me waiting to board a train to travel somewhere. This photo, um, the way that it actually came out, I thought was interesting because it looks almost surreal or like a miniature. So you, know, you have the porch, the suitcases in the front, and then I'm on the porch. I just like how all the, you know, the suitcases and the porch and the house play against each other. When I went back to this building the next year, they actually had tape up all around the porch because some of the boards were so bad, so they didn't want people walking on there anymore, which I could totally see. I was lucky I didn't fall through with my high heels. This was a photo shoot I did a couple years later after the green dress photo shoot. This dress I purchased at an estate, no, at an auction. And I think I came home with about a bag and a half of vintage clothes. Some of them were in pretty bad condition though, but a lot of them 
they were wearable. Some of them were a little bit small. This is actually probably a little girl's dress, but I was able to fit into it. It's all handmade. It's a nice maroon color with a white flower pattern over it. And then I'm wearing a ring that was made from a spoon. I love this photo. This ledger I purchased many years ago at a flea market, probably again for a dollar. And I had wanted to be able to use it in this photo shoot because I love the colors and I love the, um, you know, the script, how, how ledger was written. So I thought, well, let's try and highlight the ledger itself. And this was the image that we came up with. See, my hair is in a type of victory roll. I can't do that anymore because my hair is so short. So maybe when it grows out, I can get that style back again. Here I am again, just reading away. My shoes are not vintage. <laughs> I didn't plan on that, but this is more of an easygoing, relaxed type of photo shoot. So I thought they looked good with the dress. I did an Alice in Wonderland themed photo shoot. Again, this dress I actually purchased from the same guy that had the green dress. I probably paid about $5, $5 for it and the apron I had to buy online because I didn't have one and I couldn't find one um, prior to doing this photo shoot. My hair I absolutely loved. The lady did such a great job. So the photo on the left, you have Alice talking to the Cheshire Cat. This Cheshire Cat I actually bought down in Disney World. I had to have it because I love Alice. And then on the right, it's just Alice and the white rabbit, or in this case, a pink stuffed bunny rabbit that I purchased at the flea market. Again, probably for a whopping $1 bill. So he comes out for my Easter decor. Alice defeating the Jabberwocky. Now the Jabberwocky is not in Disney's version. It is in the original uh, Lewis Carroll's version. I purchased him, I won him at an auction, I think probably for $10. And as soon as I bought him, I thought, oh, I can use him, you know, for an Alice in Wonderland photo shoot. And that's exactly what I did. The frame is supposed to represent kind of like the looking glass with Alice looking through and then defeating the mean old Jabberwocky. These are some of the trinkets that I've collected along the way. You have those little white chairs, which I do put out at Halloween. A nice Alice figure. She is damaged in some parts, but she was in a box lot at an auction, so I had to purchase her. I made the Drink Me tag, put it on the old bottle. I actually even made cookies that are in front of the Drink Me bottle. And then you have the little assortment of, you know, a cup and saucer, a picture, pitcher, and then the tea canister, which again I purchased at an auction on a big box lot. So there's so many ways to, to use these things. Here I'm having some tea. We have the bunny, the rabbit, the teapot, the vintage teacup and saucer, which reminds me, I wonder where that is because <laughs> I haven't seen that in a number of years. And then I have my Alice book on the table. I actually had a Mad Hatter doll. He is down below by my feet, so you can't see them. So these were all taken down. These were taken down in Smithville um, by Eye on the Prize Photography. And she's located down in South Jersey. Now we move on to the Halloween photos. My cousins had just started up their photography business and they just wanted to do something different. So I said, hey, I have a great idea. <laughs> I want to do like a vintage Halloween photo shoot. So they said, sure, we'll, we'll do it. So their photo company, um, Margate, Lane, Margate Lane Photography, we went to a cemetery in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I wanted to keep it somewhat, not somewhat, I wanted to keep it a little bit, not even a little bit, I wanted to keep it tasteful because, you know, it is a cemetery, it should be respected. And, um, you know, I didn't want to do any weird, weird things. So maybe some of the photographs you'll see you might think are weird, but... I think they came out great and I just, I really love the images. So this dress, I bought this dress from the same person I bought the green dress and the blue dress from. It's probably a prom dress or like an event dress. The top actually is sequins. 
So here I am with an old lantern, and I thought this as thought of this as as a way of guiding, you know, through the cemetery, being a guiding light. Here we threw in a vintage pumpkin container, and my cousin, you know, grayed out the other colors so that the orange on the pumpkin stood out. A lot of the Halloween decor I have is just too kitschy. It wouldn't it wouldn't have looked good in the cemetery. It wouldn't have fit, so we didn't include that. I'm holding a clock in this photo, and my idea was just kind of offering time to the people that needed more time, the people that wanted to look back on time, just a offering time. This cemetery is a great cemetery to look around. There are some really nice old tombstones. I have to get back there at some point. Of course, since this was a Halloween type photo shoot, I had to incorporate one of my old doll heads. This is a bisque doll head, just the head. It is broken. I do put it out for my Halloween decor. I just like the image. You know, I'm not sure what the story would be behind this, but again, I just wanted to be able to use my the Bist doll head, and I thought that this would have been the perfect setting for it. This photo is my favorite photo. I bought the flowers at the dollar store. They're black flowers, and it's funny because they actually, you know, they look good with this tombstone. So Anne O'Brien. It's neat because the two, I mean this this tombstone or this plot is actually for three people, and she's the only one there. But you know I I just love this image. Again, I think that it's it's done respectfully. I think it's a way to pay you know respects to Anne O'Brien. And whatever her life may have been. Um, I like how it looks. And I think I like the emotion that I'm trying to convey on my face. You know, one of memory and perhaps a little bit of sadness too for the you know all the people that have come before us who may not be remembered that much anymore. And that's me just trying to get into old buildings and find old things. I didn't just realize they have a key, but there's a lock on the top, so I'm not getting in that door, but um, this was taken because I love the chippy paint and the green, but, you know, just to keep opening doors, finding things, and, and searching for things. That was the theme behind this, and that's what I try and do every weekend when I go out to flea markets, auctions, estate sales. Find things, rescue them, treasure them so that they can be used in things like this and vintage photo shoots. You know, there's no need to go out and buy new new props when you can just make your way to the flea market on a Saturday or Sunday. Spend the extra time and find that perfect item to really make your photo pop. And that's what I do love about these vintage photo shoots is I can add my own little flair to them. And so with all the new vintage clothes I purchased, perhaps I'll have to do another photo shoot. So again, thank you all for watching. It is much appreciated. Stay tuned for further episodes from Paper and Moose. And until then, have a great day and I will see you all later.